Okay, so in this video, we are going to pick up where we left off in the last video. So now we are going to talk about combining multiple gene animals, such as the albino and the snow, and we cross it with another albino and another snow gecko. Now we're talking about multiple genes that we have to combine. How do we combine multiple genes? I'm going to show you the long way first and then the short way second. So here is the long way. We are going to use this friendly acronym right here called FOIL, F-O-I-L. It stands for first, outside, inside, and last. So we want to know our statistical odds of a gecko turning out a certain way based on these parents. So we have parent number one, which is the dad. Dad is an albino, represented by these two lowercase letters, and he is a snow. So remember, when we're talking about genetics, you could have a snow albino. You can have an albino normal. You can have different combinations of these genetic markers. So remember, according to DNA, these genetic markers occur at different spots on your genetic ladder. So when your parents' DNA meets, the spot where the hair color is, that's only defining hair color. The spot where the eye color is, that's only defining eye color. Skin color, that's only defining skin color. And the combination of all of these different ladder rungs right here makes up the whole of who you are. So going back to the leopard gecko, you can have a leopard gecko because the albino gene is on one rung or one locus of that ladder and the snow gene is on another rung or another locus on that ladder. So with, that would be represented by, let's say the snow gene is here where the hair gene is and the albino gene is here where the eye gene is. Do you see how they're on different rungs so they don't affect each other? They just add to the overall look that the gecko has. So this is like a souped up Punnett square, right? How in the world do you use this thing? I'm gonna show you. Remember, the dad is on top, the mom is on the side. That's typically the way it's always done. So the dad's genetic code can be represented by albino, albino, snow, normal. Remember, this: the dad is not a super snow, he's just a regular snow. He's not carrying two copies of the snow. So using foil, this will help us to come up with the base combinations that we need to put at each one of these locations on the top and on the side of this souped up Punnett square. So use the foil method and I color coded it over here. First, you are going to use the first letter here with the first opposite letter of the other gene that you're talking about. So remember, we have two genes here, albino gene, and the snow gene. We have to know all the combinations that this dad can pass on to his child. Remember that little gamete in the beginning, the sperm and the egg? That sperm and egg is only receiving half of this father's DNA. So how do we calculate what that half might be? This is how we do it. So let's look at foil. Blue, orange, red, green. And that's the method we're gonna go here. This first letter with this letter and so we are going to get this combo. A plus S is this, AS. And I apologize ahead of time because I used albino and snow. I got the full presentation prepared and lined up. And then I realized that I'm spelling stuff out like this right here. So I apologize. I like all my content to be family friendly. Um, if it means anything, that word means donkey in old English, so we'll just go with that, okay? But first, blue, this is where it goes. This first letter here with the other traits first letter. Orange, you're gonna take your first letter and mix it with the other traits last letter, which will be represented by this. And then red is gonna be the second letter. The second letter of the first trait mixed with the first letter of the second trait. I know that probably sounds confusing. And then um, green is gonna be the last, uh, the second letter of the first trait and the second letter of the last trait. And that's what you get. Now we're using a mom that has the exact same DNA as the dad. So let's do that again, foil. First, 
outside, inside, last. You see that? Okay, so now let's make our combinations. Instead of dropping down one letter and one letter like we did with the simple Punnett square, this method requires to you to drop down two letters, one represented from each uh, genetic characteristic that you are looking to pass down to the children. So it needs to pass, the father needs to pass down one, you know, one of the albino genes and he also needs to pass down one of the snow genes and that's represented here, you know. He's either passing this down or passing this down, this down or this down. That's what the foil method does. And same thing with the mom. She's passing down one of these four combinations and now they must be combined to create a genetic code that is similar to this, four letters long. That will tell you if the babies are carrying the albino gene or expressing it and carrying the snow gene or expressing it. So we have three different combinations. I preset these combinations so that I can do this quickly and easily. And so when you drop down an AS from the dad and an AS from the mom, remember the A's are gonna pair together and the S's are gonna pair together. You're gonna get an albino super snow. Do you see that? A-A-S-S. This is the albino gene in this baby. And this is the snow gene in this baby. And this baby actually happens to have two of the snow genes. So now its dominance is complete and it's gonna show that extra level of display in the animal. This Punnett square must be done with 16 squares, four by four. So now your odds are gonna be at a 16 instead of four, but it's the same thing. You just take one out of 16 instead of one out of four and you know count up all the ones that are similar. And that's what we're gonna do here later. There's only three different outcomes that this pairing can make. Out of these outcomes, we will be able to tell which outcomes are gonna have what percentages to show up in the babies. Now we're gonna pass down onto here. So I'm gonna show you the different combinations and then I will show you the completed chart. Okay, I just wanted to come up with the three different possibilities and then I'm gonna fill in the rest of the chart and we're gonna talk about it. Okay, now if you can, it's gonna help you understand this so much better if you actually take a few minutes and make out the design yourself. So I completed the design and now we're gonna talk about statistical odds. So after all of these carry down, we're gonna have three different types of combinations that can get passed along. We can have an albino super snow down here. We can have an albino regular snow and we can also have an albino no snow. Okay. So there is really no good color here that is going to be easy on the eyes, but we are going to use orange for albino super snows, white for the albino snows, and let's say green for the albino no snow. So since I have the green up, albino no snow, we have one, two, three, four. Albino super snow, we have one, two, three, four. And then the rest remaining are going to be albino, one copy of the snow gene. Let's start with albino super snow. We have one, two, three, four. Four albino super snows out of a total of 16 blocks, you know, um, out of a total of 16 blocks, four over 16, that percentage is 25. So 25% of our babies are going to be albino super snows. What percent is going to be albino snows? Well, if you count up the white blocks, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of 16 is 50%. So 50% of our babies are going to be albino and snow. And how many are going to be albino, no snow, not carrying the snow gene at all, is in the green, one, two, three, four, again, 25%. So we can see that four out of 16, or 25% of our babies, 
are going to be albino and super snow. 50% of the babies are going to be albino and one copy of the snow gene. And the last 25% of our babies are going to be albino, no copies of the snow gene. Do you see how this souped up Punnett square works when you're, when you're combining multiple genes? This is one of the ways to where you can figure out the percentages that you're going to have of multiple genes overlapping each other and combining uh, between the parents. So again, this was talking about two different genes, the albino gene and the snow gene. Now, when you increase the genes, like let's say you're talking about albino, snow, and eclipse gene. Now we're talking about three different genes. There's a much easier way to do it, and I'm gonna show it to you here next. All right, guys, so here we have my preferred way of calculating the genetic odds inside of leopard gecko. So here we have the same dad and the same mom. This dad is an albino snow. This mom is an albino snow. To do this, we are gonna go back to our simple Punnett squares of only two on the top by two on the side. Two from the mom and two from the dad. We have to calculate the genetic odds of an albino passing along from the dad and the genetic odds of an albino passing along from the mom and then the same with the snow. So stick with me here, it's gonna be pretty easy. So as you see, I, I've labeled these categories albino and snow because those are the two genetic traits that we're talking about combining here. In this Punnett square, we're gonna calculate the genetic odds of the dad's albinism gene multiplied by the mom's albinism gene. And in this box, we are going to compare the dad's snow gene combined with the mom's genetic odds of the snow gene. We are going to multiply those out at the very end and you will get the same genetic odds that we came up with in the last example. So let's walk through this. The dad is a pure albino represented by two copies of the albino gene and the mom is a pure albino represented by two copies of the albino gene. So that means each of their children are going to get an albino gene passed down from each parent and all four of the children are gonna be albino. 100% of these babies are gonna be albino. Remember, this is the dad's albinism gene combined with the mom's albinism gene. They're both gonna pass down the exact same copies because they're both carriers of albino. So what's the genetic probability of just the albino gene getting passed down to all of the babies? The probability is 100%. Now let's look at the snow gene. Remember, one copy of the snow gene is represented by big S and then a normal N because it's not carrying the snow gene here. And your genetic combinations you're gonna come up with and your genetic combinations you're gonna come up with are gonna be these four. So there's three different outcomes here. Remember, we just did the snow dad multiplied by the snow mom. We dropped everything into its positions and this is what we get. We get one out of four is gonna be super snow. Two out of four is going to be regular snow. And one out of four is going to be uh, no snow. Here, all we have to do to calculate the statistical odds of how many babies are gonna be what percent is take all three of the different genetic outcomes over here and their overall percentage and pop it down here and multiply it by the albino percentage and that's what you're gonna get. So let's start with the super snow. How many of these babies are super snow? One out of four, which is what percent? 25%. 100, so 25% of the babies are super snow. 100% of these babies are albino. All you have to do is multiply the two. 100% albino times 25% super snow. Guess what you're gonna get? 25% of your babies are gonna be both albino and super snow. 
let's go back to our other chart. This is albino and super snow. What is the percentage of albino super snows when we did it the long way here? 25%. See that? 25%. Now let's do regular snow. How many of these babies are regular snow only carrying one copy of the gene? One, two. Two out of four is 50%. Again, same thing. 100% times 50%, and what do you get? 50% of the babies are going to be albino and carrying one copy of the snow gene. Let's double check that with our work from the last one. Snow, albino, 50%. Lastly, let's do the last combination, normal. How many of these babies are not carrying the snow gene? One out of four, which again is 25%. And 100% albino times 25% normal, not carrying the snow gene, what do you get? You're gonna get 25% of your babies are gonna be albino and normal, not carrying the snow gene. And what do we have over here? Albino and normal, not carrying the snow gene, 25%, 25%. Okay, my friends, well, that is it. That is our genetics lesson on how genetics work in leopard geckos. Start testing it out yourself, trying it out. Let me know if you have any questions. And I realize that sometimes it is easier to see something done instead of figuring it out yourself. So I might create a part two to this video that will actually show you combining like three, four, five gene animals. But again, just like we showed in our last example, calculate the percentage of each individual gene and multiply that out. So remember, all you need to do is take each individual genetic trait, such as albino, from both parents, get the statistical odds of an albino popping out, multiply that by the statistical odds of a snow popping out, and then multiply that again by the statistical odds of a eclipse popping out, multiply by multiply by multiply, and the, the combinations are endless. You just keep multiplying, and yes, the number is gonna get smaller and smaller a lot of times because when you start combining more traits, the statistical odds of you hitting those traits begin to drop down, depending on the parents. So um, I might make another video that kind of shows that level of combinations but if you have any more questions on it just let me know and um yeah i can talk to you about it so thank you for tuning in once again please if you learned something from this video it helps me so much if you share it like the video comment on the video uh subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and also ring the notification bell because that will let you know every time i release a new video i am releasing videos more often now so I will be releasing videos at least one or two times a week. And um, it's all going to be about reptiles, leopard geckos, genetics, morphs, everything. So I love sharing this stuff. I love studying this stuff. And um, I just want to grow the community and help out. So see you guys next time and have a geeky gecko great day.